said take away the protections of the courts, free property rights, and economic rights. No one, you know, here I'm getting heckled by the House Leader of the Government of Alberta. I don't recall myself heckling anybody. Restrict, <laughs> Restrict rights to compensation. And, and this is going to be the little surprise bit, because I actually went through and I read the new regulation. You, you heard that they've released the draft regional plan for the Lower Athabasca. And you've heard that uh, about that. Well, there's actually a regulation that goes with it. And guess what? I'm going to put a section up about what it says. And it basically appoints a government official to micromanage your farm or oil companies or ranches or forestry companies and water use. And uh, if I'm going to get heckled from the front row again, I'd appreciate if they read the legal section before they heckle me. So, section 11. Section 11, <coughs> the Elta Link must know I'm here. <laughs> Section 11, cabinet's regional plans can amend or rescind existing rights, including development rights, resource extraction rights, mining rights, water licenses, etc. Now let me explain to you what this means. Because on the face of it, you kind of go, well, couldn't they do that anyway? I mean, that's what you were just told. This is no big deal. The government could do that any anyway. Well, I was involved, as some of you may know, actually Ty Lund would remember some of this, because uh, it was partly on his watch that he had to put up with me back then, um, that I was involved in the development of the Water Act for the livestock commodity groups. And one of the concerns that we had, and agriculture had, was the circumstances under which Alberta Environment could cancel the water license, okay? So there's very narrowly defined situations under Section 55 of the Water Act where the director can cancel your water license. I'll give you an example. You haven't diverted for three years and you haven't built any works to divert. Makes sense. I have a problem with it. But very narrow terms, okay? Let me use an analogy. And I have to use one to illust a dramatic one to illustrate the point here. Imagine you're driving down the road in your car and your truck's clean, you've got your proper license plate and sticker on, and you've got your registration, and you've got your driver's license, and everything's good, and you haven't done a thing wrong. Don't even have anything in your box so they can claim a loose load. Okay? And a police officer pulls you over, and he says to you, I'm taking your license. I'm rescinding it. And you say to him, well, on what grounds? He says, well, I don't need it. And you say, well, for what reason? He says, I don't need it. That's a troubling concept, isn't it? We'd like to live in a society where there's some restrictions and limits on what government and they can do. Section 11, there's no criteria. Section 11 doesn't say uh, the cabinet can rescind an oil sands lease when they determine that it's in the, it doesn't even say public interest. It's completely wide open. The cabinet can rescind your water license because they want to. And I'm not saying, I, I'd like to say I wouldn't think they would and then uh, of course, when I was getting interviewed on this, I would explain that the, the cabinet, get, the Section 11 gives the cabinet unfettered discretion to rescind uh, oil and gas leases, uh, oil sands leases, water licenses, timber, and gun. And the reporters would say to me, oh, come on, Mr. Wilson, come. Do you honestly, ex you really think that this government, this government would rescind an oil sands lease? No, come on. <laughs> and what did they do two weeks ago? <laughs> to rescind an oil sands lease. One of them, Sunshine Oil, owned by the Chinese government, as if they have no influence in the world, <laughs> to, and potential price tag for us of $7.6 billion if they're compensated. If they're prepared to do that, what hesitancy are they going to have to cancel your uh, CFO approval from, from the NRCB for your dairy barn, or your water license, or your grazing lease, or your timber harvest agreement? If they're prepared to put up with the political wrath the investment response from the investment community in Bloomberg, do you really think they're going to hesitate to, uh, to take away these other rights? So anyway, section, section 19 restricts your rights to compensation. Um, how am I doing for time? Well, three hours. Keep on going. Okay. So, 
this compensation issue, I'll go into the details of that in a minute, but remember something. When I was in law school, I wrote a research paper on the history and origins of surface rights compensation. I researched it back, right back to a regulation in 1895 under the Dominion Lands Act. I've argued all the leading cases. I've appeared before every compensation board. I'm regularly asked to speak at professional conferences about compensation entitlements. I did not read this legislation looking to not find it. I went hunting for it, and it's not there. They're telling you it's there. I've laid out in writing why it's not there. I've had a meeting with Minister Mel Knight and explained to him why it's not there. The linkages aren't there. The act doesn't say what they say. I've showed them repeatedly, and they continue not to fix it and continue to tell you they have. So either they don't understand it, or there's someone else doing some misrepresentation. follow the argument about sections about binding on uh, about uh, how somehow this didn't change the role of the courts. I'm just going to put the sections right up here in a minute. There's section 11 um, or thanks Joe <laughs> uh, I don't know how clear this comes up for you guys but but anyway uh, it, it there it is. It just says uh, for achieving a, a purpose or maintaining an objective or a policy of a regional plan, a regional plan may, by express reference to a statutory consent or type or class of statutory consent, affect or amend or rescind the statutory consent, blah, blah, blah. It doesn't say, here's the criteria that have to be met. When that police officer pulls you over, he can't take your license. There's limitations on the government's power. He has to, you have to do things wrong before you can take your license. You don't have to do anything wrong in Alberta now for this cabinet to decide that it's taking away your, your CFO approval for your feedlot, or to take away your grazing rights, or your gravel permit, or your pipeline permit if you're in the oil and gas business. All of these things can be rescinded at the whim of cabinet. That is not a characteristic of a modern parliamentary democracy in the British tradition that believes in property rights and a market economy. Here, 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 here. time here. Uh, what are the new laws about? Look, I found this today. Sorry, Joe, next slide. Um, you know, one of the Reeves of a county who I won't name in case their government's going to threaten to cut off their funding or something, because I've been hearing a lot about intimidation lately. Um, but before Bill 36, this, we, a lot of us know the term the white area and the green area. That's a familiar concept in rural Alberta. Well, and I, don't, I tried to find the number of acres, but it's a lot. It's millions and millions of acres. And what this, this Reeve pointed out to me, he said prior to Bill 36, throughout the history of this province, municipalities have had primary responsibility for land use decision making on mil tens of millions of acres in the white area. And with the stroke of a pen through Bill 36, it's now all under SRD. So all that white area that was under municipal control by municipally, by locally elected people is now effectively under the control of the government in the province in Edmonton. Just like that. Those are the facts. Now, um, they say that, oh, we're going to respect local decision making. Uh, section 20, there's the legalese, so Mr. Hancock can study it while the rest of us visit. Um, but what it says is, um, a regional plan, when a regional is planned, every local government affected by the regional plan must review its, re its regulatory instruments and bring them into compliance, okay? So that's what they have to do. So and I've, some of you have heard me speak, uh, um, there's only twice I've done this when my son's actually here, and this one, tonight's one of the nights. I told you guys that what I was going to do so the government says, we respect municipalities. We just tell them that what they are going to do has to comply with our wishes in cabinet. That's all. We still respect them. So I thought, great. I'm going to try this out on my 16-year-old because he thinks he knows better uh, about what he should do on the weekend. Actually, it was my 15-year-old on the way down on the phone. But, um, so I said to my 16-year-old, I said, hey, look, uh, this weekend, no problem. You can do whatever you want as long as it complies with what I say. 
And he didn't jump for joy. 